Welcome everyone to Political Paradigm. I'm Terry Ikumi. It's back to school season and uh, parents are groaning. There are concerns as to what seems like rumors around increase in school fees. And then there are also concerns around government policies that are being called to question. So in the last one here, let's take a look at the education sector and see how it's fared on the, the Tinubu administration, especially since the ministers are marking one year in office. Uh, there are two ministers in the education uh, sector now. So let's talk to one of them. My guest is the Honorable Minister of State for Education, Honorable Minister Yusuf Tanku Sununu. Welcome to Police Paradigm. Thank you, Mr. Terry, for having me. I think I spoke with you just uh, when you assumed office to get your understanding of the ministry you were about to take over. And uh, as I said in my opening, there are two ministers now to address some of the concerns that Nigerians experienced when we had a minister in there for eight years and almost a total decay in the education sector. So as you mark one year in office, I'd like to get your assessment of how you think the ministry has fared in the past one year, especially with regard to government policies. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for having me, as I said earlier. Well, in the last one year, we have had a lot of uh, issues addressed and there are some ongoing works for so many challenges in the sector. One education is one of the largest sectors in the country, and it's not surprising because it's the basic bedrock for national development, for unity, cohesion, for region, local and regional uh, integrations. These are all the issues that are addressed by our national policy on uh, education. Uh, when we came, we met a ministry with uh, so many laudable programs, but there are some uh, implementation issues with so many gaps. Uh, with uh, multiple duplications in many different uh, departments. But uh, luckily for us, we are given a matching order by Mr. President uh, through the Ministerial Deliberable, which we have signed, and uh, also along with the eight-point agenda of Mr. President that covers all the uh, collaborative effort within the eight-point agenda of Mr. President. And we are also guided by the National Police on Education. As I mentioned earlier, briefing gaps that we have tried to see how we can address those issues. Basically, I would say that uh, if you look at issues, uh, you say, what are the issues and where are the, if we look at, we made actually there, there are some pillars, infrastructure, as you mentioned earlier, there are some decays. And in the last one year, uh, we have tried to do more in terms of school renovations and also construction. Uh, uh, but also you should know that uh, what makes education a very difficult environment is the nature of education being con in the concurrent list with so many responsibilities in, at lower level of government in the, uh, let's say the local government and also state government with national being major input in terms of uh, developing policy, supervising and assuring quality uh, uh, assurance and then uh, track, uh, tracking and developing the progress of where we are. So these are this because of that concurrent nature. But in our unsupportive actions, we have tried to see with this position agencies that are to do with a lot in terms of our, our infrastructural development. Uh, the issue of the universal basic education is very vital. And uh, as much as possible, we try to ensure that uh, so much is now being invested into education. Uh, with major achievement there is the alignment we have achieved between the uh, state and the federal government. Mm. When we came into office, so many states have a lot of fun lying fallow with universal basic education because of their failure to pay their matching grants. And this, as of today, virtually all the states are accessing their uh, matching grant. They are paying their matching grant and accessing the fund, uh, putting it into uh, infrastructural development in Bureau State. And we have also tried to start that and improving our inspect uh, inspection function through the universal basic education to ensure that money for Balu. Mm. And that's, uh, we, 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 we have also appreciated that. Even at, at the level of basic education, uh, secondary school education, there are a serious gap in terms of funding. But because of Mr. President's commitment to education, uh, we have this for the first time. The National Secondary School Service Commission has received uh, a massive one of about 50, nearly 50 billion as a capital project. And as of today, all the procurement processes have been done and uh, con contractors have been mobilized to site so that they can improve as a support to their state. And this is spread across the whole uh, federation in the addition. A level of education in terms of also infrastructure. Uh, me say that we have already commissioned 53 basic 
vocational education schools, which have also been handed over to school and they are, this, they are working. We have also tried to see how we can improve on our teacher crisis by going into partnership. Currently, we have a partnership with the uh, UNESCO IGBA to see how we can train and retrain teacher in terms of deploying technology into teaching profession. And to go along with, we have strengthened the uh, understanding between Koika of Japan and the universal basic education to the extent that uh, the installations, uh, building installation training of trainers has been completed to ensure that our digital resource center at Kado is been uh, is, is made functional. And as of today, it's uh, it started training and it has also been linked to many smart schools that have so far been uh, constructed in the addition. We also try to see how we can uh, review the issue of funding at tertiary level. Uh, the third fund is living up to its expectations. And uh, at, at now, we have uh, uh, the third fund has been directed to focus more especially in terms of the activating our workshop mm. and then imp imputing into our uh, deployment more instrument that will ensure that we have given the necessary uh, skills to students who are in training. And uh, we also give them much, uh, a lot of addition. It's been now paid to reorganize its committee so that research and research grant utilization can also be effectively uh, maintained. And then if you go to most of our tertiary institutions, you also see that infrastructural development. And another major pillar is the curriculum. It's, uh, when we came in, it is, uh, it is good enough to know that for the past 14 years, our curriculum has not been reviewed. And you and I believe, and everybody will believe that, Anything that has lasted for 14 years is out of tune with current reality mm -hmm. in terms of uh, need for, for AI technology and so many issues so that will make in, uh, our candidate or our student stand the test of time and be useful in the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And as of today, we have completed uh, a review of our curriculum in trades and uh, it has already uh, been uh, distributed. And for basic education and secondary schools uh, in our country, the the review of the curriculum and uh, has also been completed. We are just going to, in this December and September, we are going to have National Council of Education in, in Abuja in yeah. the next few days to come, and that will be presented okay. for adoption and then for utilization. It goes ahead to address a lot of our needs of current uh, reality, which is a very big uh, success in terms of uh, everybody was complaining about our curriculum on which you have succeeded in, the, okay. in review. All right, so uh, you've said quite a lot, and I want to take you up on some of them. Because I know that this year the president approved this uh, national education data system and also talked about the need for vocational training, which you've talked about. You've mentioned about 53 vocational uh, institutions. institutions. Perhaps you could be a little more detailed on them and the extent of their success so far. Well, uh, what the president uh, approved for us is a whole lot of projects <clears throat> put in a single word, dot. That is D-O-T-S. The D, which you have rightly mentioned, stands for the data repository. And uh, you know that uh, data is very vital in terms of planning, resources allocation, tracking even progress of what you have achieved. And this is actually lacking. For so many examples, for example, now you have a lot of data in terms of out-of-school children, in terms of infrastructure. But different bodies will give you different data as a time. So as of today, now we, have, uh, we are concluding that arrangement and very soon in the next few days, the enumeration will start. Enumerators will go around and we'll get data of all our schools, data of our teachers, data of our inf uh, of infrastructure at level, so that we know how many percentage of our students are out of school, how many of them age 18 to 35 are in university, how many of them, and then in your own room, you will be able to, uh, if I may just take all that, to track using a dashboard the progress of each and every student. And this one we are working together with the other agencies of government so that we can have a holistic approach. And that is this, in the out of school children phenomenon, we all agree that it's a major issue in Nigeria <coughs> and it is features as a major thematic area in the eight point agenda of Mr. President. And uh, in that regard, we are working hard and we have been given mandate as a ministry in our last audit for the one year, we have succeeded in returning over 4 million students back to school. What we are now bottling with and we are working hard is to see what is, our, is going to be our retention rate of those 4 million that we have uh, so far returned back to school and then in addition to those that we are also going to bring back to school and then what will also be their completion rate because there are so many factors. But luckily okay. for us, the currently now you know that major issue that is challenging our progress as well as addressing the issue of out-of-school children 
is concerned is issue of insecurity in the country. Mm. And you all believe that in the last uh, uh, 10 days to say, for example, yeah. we have seen a lot of massive effort that, so, by our security agencies to address the issue of insecurity. So and that, once that is achieved, more students will be, less students will be displaced from their school and a lot of those that are going to be returned back to school will be able to remain in school and read, write, and uh, take lessons physically. So, so the issue of insecurity is where yes. I wanted to take my cue from to find out how you have been able to return 4 million people, uh, children back to school uh, and in what regions of the country? The 10 million that were, uh, 4 million that were returned is a nationwide. We have a nationwide uh, campaign that I personally also went to different states. With Minister also went to a different state and it, was, and it has a national outlook and we have gone around to ensure that we sensitize state government. We also sensitize the uh, state universal basic education board, which we are doing with them at this uh, to ensure that those students are returned. And we peacefully supervise the at this and, uh, and the they incentives to get them back to school? Did you have to uh, employ incentives to get them back to school apart from the appeal? No, it's not that we, we have a, we have incentive quite all right. Okay. You know, we're working together with uh, state universal basic education. And we have a fund line that we used to return students back to school, mm. which will also address also the issue of teacher training within the, within the fund. But what we are looking now is uh, the effort by the federal government to see how it can organize the school feeding program. And I think once that is completed, that will also give us more added advantage so that more students, because not only in Nigeria, even outside, studies have shown that uh, introduction of one meal per day per student has gone ahead to improve a lot of our school retention and school enrollment rate in schools. And uh, the federal government is seriously working. So why that. was that not effective? Do you, I, I know you are just one year in and you're trying to reintroduce it. No, did, no, did you, to re-strategize it. Yeah, to, re to re-strategize it. Yes, but how it, so that was make it not, more effective. That was not impactful when it was introduced in the last administration. So what exactly are you doing differently? What we are doing now, we are trying to see uh, the, 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 the other issue initially. Uh, the committee is working to see how it can be returned back to education. Mm. And once that is into education, it flows, uh, we are in direct contact with students. And we can be able to assess the progress and also the challenges. So that it can be a uh, decent. And then... Uh, as of today, the committee are almost rounding up their, uh, their, their, their assignment to come out with a formidable way of achieving uh, effectivity in terms of school feeding program. You know, the state of um, public schools is deplorable. And that's uh, so when you talk about getting returning them back to school and retaining them in school, that's also another challenge because I think that is why uh, most uh, private schools are now thriving. So with regard to budgets in, to address the issue of infrastructure, because you recall that most of the strikes are held in the past uh, maybe 10 years or thereabout were mainly uh, due to infrastructure deficit in our public schools. So what exactly is the budgeting plan to introduce, uh, to improve infrastructure in public schools? Yes, uh, it's, it's what I said earlier. We have to, we have to thank the president. We're working on his political will and the campaign promises to improve budgeting and uh, cash allocation to Federal Minister of Edu uh, to Education in general. And Mr. President has really demonstrated that in the 2024 budget, apart from security, which covers virtually everything, you have to secure your school before you can even go under uh, this. Although we agree that at no circumstances, education must continue. Mm -hmm. But you must get sure that since the country is secured for us, Nigeria comes, uh, sorry, education comes next to the security in terms of cash, uh, budgetary allocation. And uh, to be uh, faithful to his uh, uh, commitment, Mr. President has also ensured a uh, steady release of funds as far as the budget is concerned, mm -hmm. which will allow us to liberate more. And that's why I told you earlier that we have concluded the National Secondary School Service Commission that Hitato has not received a penny, has received and is now mobilizing uh, to almost all the state of the Federation for infrastructure, infrastructural support in government-owned schools. Understand, and I also tell you how effective the this year's are. This if you look at our this year, Ted Fund has never received funding as it has received this year, and then so also in terms of the universal basic education. And if you look at, look at also the incentive and initiative of Mr. President, the NEL Fund, which has also infused more past massive uh, fund into education, so that you can increase access to tertiary level of education. There are other series of ideas where money is also about, come but, but into monitoring, monitoring mechanisms. Because it is one thing, one thing for 
these uh, allocations to be released is another thing to have it implemented. Like you mentioned, tent, tent fund. I think the bureaucracy in tent fund has largely affected it. We have, you've had uh, uh, institutions complain about accessing those funds. No, no, no. You see, it's not accessing. Tent fund has a criteria. Where is it? It's meeting the criteria of what and how you are going to spend that money on. It's the major issue. And then one, two, we must also know that the number in terms of a number of schools that are accessing TED for now has almost tripled rather than how it used to be before. And then let me tell you what both state, a lot of our federal state institutions exclude TED fund. Those schools will collapse. If you go, you take a random data to study the infrastructural investment in particular state school from, let's say, 2000, 2024, or even 2023, let's say, that's what I've extended. You find that virtually 90% of the, of the infrastructural, uh, this thing is, even in terms of capacity building for lecturers and even infusement of, in terms of research are largely funded by TED fund. So this is what I'm telling you that the nature of the, uh, this thing, while we are supposed to be supporting, it has gone to the extent that at the federal level is now being overpowered mm. by so much work. And the responsibility of even local government are pushed into federal, to, to the federal government. For example, if you go to a rural village, when you see a secondary, a primary school mm. so dilapidated, the first thing is the president has not done anything. People forget that the national policy of education says that is in the purview of the local government and the state government. But despite that, we also have to do ahead to ensure that we fill in a lot of gaps mm. so that the system will continue and the uh, uh, unhindered at okay. least at certain level. Beautiful. Speaking of funding, uh, the student loan initiative is, uh, I think, five months old now. Uh, it's not domiciled in your ministry. It is uh, it responds, answers to the president directly. But your ministry is on the board of uh, the student loan initiative or managed by Nell Fund. Could you talk to us about the extent of implementation, especially considering um, the data that has been put out there by Nell Fund and the concerns that have arisen? Yes, we are in the board. And not only that, we are in the board. We are also the reporting ministry to the president. Nell Fund report to the president through the Federal Ministry of Education. So we have a very cordial relationship with Nell Fund. And uh, we have been, uh, if there is any program as of today that is so transparent that you can track timeline a snail fund. That you cannot do away with that for, for them. You go to their website, you see how many students have so far applied, how many students at what level of their processing of their loan is, and how many have so far received both their personal and institutional grants, uh, institutional uh, mm -hmm. component of the loan. So it has been a, a decent. But what we really observe is that there is some, you know, the trust in governance. That's why the president came here, uh, came with, uh, come up with mission to renew the hope of operating Nigerians. That trust is not there. Initially, a lot of students thought it was just uh, a political statement without political will to implement it. But as today, it has been demonstrated. It's only not only political uh, uh, statement, but there is also a strong political will backed by a lot of legal uh, component of it to ensure that the uh, phone comes to reality and it's being accessed no. as of today. The other issue that we have also noticed in terms of that issue, uh, which we are addressing right now, is what I've mentioned, the Lucom attitude of some student. And Nelfon on its own as a body has started an advocacy level towards state, meeting so many stakeholders. They have been to many states in the north and the south, and uh, I think in the next few days, they are likely going to be either in Jigawa well, State. Maybe they're afraid of the repayment plan. Because that's also been described as enslavement, especially considering a country with a with soaring unemployment rate. Now, you're supposed to pay back this loan two years after completing your NYSE. Yes. If you're unable to pay because you don't have a job or a business, you're supposed to write and seek uh, extension. But do they say that you're going to be jailed? No, right? Well, I mean, those who have criticized it no. describe it as no, enslavement. See, that's why in the so when you're done, when you take era. such a loan a, and you're done with school, you're trying to serve and then you're unable to pay. I'm not saying mm. it is either a good or a bad thing. I'm yes. saying how's the ministry taking that in and are there considerations to adjust uh, these concerns? You see, or is it there, there's nothing that says that once you did not pay and you are unable to pay, you are liable. But then how does it there affect no the fund? In that if, for example, if, for example, you have a backlog of debts yes. that have not been paid, how does the government you, continue to fund you see, something it's those like assumption. that? assumption. Let us say now, right now, 
a lot of our school we must thank to the alumni association who have passed through the system. Just some few weeks ago, we are at the Federal Government Academy Sledger. And I've seen the, because of the impact of the project being undertaken by uh, alumni association, we have to give an extension of 10 days before resumption because they are, they are doing the total overhaul of virtually the school. And it is on record also, someone in Nigeria accessed loan in 1978 or so. And he kept it in his mind, just looking, looking for an opportunity. And with an establishment of nail fund, he has paid that dues of almost three million, equivalent of what he has, he has calculated, equivalent to what he has accessed since 1978. This goes to show Nigerians are really their protest keepers. Mm. And we cannot just think because people will not pay, will not will write up the benefit of that system. So what we are going to do as we are going, we are also instilling that discipline of nationhood, of uh, protest keepers, so that they can realize that, look, in my life along the line, through President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, Nelfon imparted positively to me, and I will be able to pay back my money. And not only be that, I will be the champion and alumni of Nelfon, and they will gather together also, utilize their distinct ability and national reach also mm. pay back to the fund. I think that so I think... the positive aspect of this is what we are capitalizing in. But we didn't say that if you, the law or the act did not mandate that if you cannot pay under any circumstances, you should be there. No. And I think this also ties to um, concerns around increase in school fees. There's a back and forth as to whether there is an increase in school fees. I don't know if you have a, a, a statement on that. Yeah, yeah, yes, see, let me just say that uh, I've seen a lot in terms of uh, uh, writing that we have increased even at the, our Federal Unity College school fees. That was not correct and that was not true. What happened was we have somebody who went doctored the letter-headed paper of the federal ministry uh, of education, also doctored the signature of uh, the director secondary school education and issue a circular saying that the school fees has been increased from 100,000 for the first time to 386,000 plus, which is entirely incorrect and it's a doctored uh, document. And as a, right now, we are working with security agencies to, to unveil who are the people behind that. At the same time, we have two major documents that were doctored from the Ministry of Education. We have a, a group that we are also in partnership with them. And those ones, the security agencies who are looking at the security implication of what they have done, is that to go ahead to say that we have issued a circular on the 2025 uh, school, Nigeria school debate that Nigeria, we are proposing a topic that uh, same-sex marriages should be legalized in Nigeria. Those ones, we have apprehended them, and the security is working on them. So okay. what I want to add this in is to say that, as, as today, the Federal Ministry of Education has not directed any school fees to be increased even by a single COBO. Not across any level of education. Well, it's quite a, across level of education is also, uh, you have to know that each university, or each tertiary institutions has its own uh, peculiarities that they are addressing. But we have also told them that whatever you are going to do must be in collaboration with major stakeholders. And who are the major stakeholders? The parent and also student union government of such institutions. There are other instances whereby school, in, last year, school, uh, school fees were, 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 were introduced or increased without taking the necessary uh, interest of the stakeholders, especially the student union government. That we have to have, by then there wasn't a council. The ministry has to act on it, and those were addressed to meet the need of the student. Okay. And then let's also say say that the issue of school fees as of today is only a problem to a student who wanted to be a problem team at tertiary level, mm. because we have institutional component of the in the student loan fund, which you can access and will be paid directly to the school, not to you. So even if you are afraid, you can just take that one. You, some, you know, the major issue we have also realized is that because of COVID loan, that is linked mm. to BVF. Mm. Money is going into account of students is being uh, they are, they are, they are, who access the loan have been, uh, have been deducted so that they can refund those loans. Yes. So that's one of the major issues. What I want to say is so, why, so, can't so you, what, 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 why can't you access the, is, the institutional component can, can, which will not come to your DC. Okay, so it goes directly to the school. Yes, it goes directly to the school. So it has nothing to hit your account. So that you are not the fear that somebody will... So, so, uh, 
So we, this we individual, actually, this individual now owes for COVID and then owes his uh, education. That's interesting. But we have two things to talk about yes. in five minutes, and I hope that we can quickly talk yes. about it. And one of them is the age limit for admission into universities, 18 years. And it's generating quite a number of reactions. Some say that some children are smart enough to gain admission at 16, 17, or even 15. I know people who get PhDs in their 20s. Is this not a restriction? Well, I, I'm just happy that uh, as of today that Nigerians agree that uh, there is no debate on age for writing WAEC, NECO, mm. and uh, MBIS examination because we have already addressed that issue that it's not an issue that has come into fall. But for the issue of uh, age entry into university, I've also made it in different fora that yes, it arises and it's a point of discussion and it's a work on progress. Uh, work on progress in the sense that we are even invited and we are at the federal uh, House of Representatives to make our position, which we said is just what is derived from the national policy on education that says that at age of six, you should enter your primary school. Uh, even at age of uh, three, you can be your primary school, pre-primary school level, and but at six, you should be in primary school, spend six years in primary school, go to basic education for another three years, and then that's junior secondary school, and then you now proceed to a secondary school at age of uh, uh, for another three years. Mm. Then you proceed to university four or more years, depending so, on the So this, this policy, so policy is adjustable. Is, when that issue was rose, a lot of out, uh, outcry, and then a lot of interest developed. And we say, okay. That is good. We are now considering and looking at what people are saying. Mm. We do agree that there are exemptions. And the ministry is also looking at the possibility. Uh, we are working on to see how we can have uh, a policy document that will identify who are the talented students. You understand? Who can be given rare exceptional distance. Okay. And yes. then people will say, uh, outside country, even at the age of 10, 15, you can become a professor. Mm. But what you need to do in the nurses they were citing, we need to go and Google. Okay. What are the type of professors? So is just one, just one. What is this for <laughs> your professionalization? Just one, one field that you took in your just, ju just one more thing. So we are working. But let me just put it. In. Let us wait. The National Council of Education is coming up in September. Okay. And with the resolution we have reached and the old finding we have had, will be forwarded to the National Council of Education. Mm -hmm. We will now come with a national policy statement on that. All right. So just one more thing now. Um, the ban on Togo and Bene universities, the certificates. Can you talk to us about that? Because the concerns now are, uh, are, gender, are centered around why it is a blanket ban. Why not address the, the universities that are not accredited and deal with them? No, no, you see, it's not, a, it's not a blanket ban. We didn't say all degrees from Togo, mm. Benin are not recognized. What we said, degrees from unaccredited institutions from Togo and Benin and any other place that we generally confirm is not accredited. Okay. It's not acceptable in Nigeria. And we have gone ahead, players, not what we have on social media platform. Okay. To get a document from Benin and Togo of the recognized university by that country. Okay. NEC has no right to accredit university in Togo. But NEC has equivalent body in Togo. Mm -hmm that also accredited your universities. And not what we see in social media. A lot of institutions in Nigeria that may not be recognized, if you go on social media, they can create a website to say that they are accredited. Okay. So we now say that we are not mm -hmm. recognizing any degree that is not recognized by Togo and the Republic as an, uh, okay. a degree awarding institution. Okay. And for Togo, they have only three Degree awarding institution, and for Benin, they have five. So, so that, that, any order, that, I, think, I think that's also in debate because I know any that other qualification know, outside that, yeah, it's not acceptable. I think we will look into it's that. Not, eventually no because I saw no, I, wait, my wait, institutions wait. at a certain stage in Nigeria. I was I, uh, no, we're, we're, out, we're out of time. I was going to respond oh. to the, the 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 number of institutions that you say are accredited. Yes, because I think there was a, the stakeholder education stakeholders in Benin Republic responded saying that there were more than three and five in Togo and Benin as you had put it. But, but we're but looking also what was given to us. Okay, I think your minister will probably look into it. Yes. But I'd like to say a very big yes, thank, thank you to you, uh, Honorable Yusuf Sununu. Thank you very much for coming and on. Thank you for Political having me.